Here we go. All right, so you have your notes right here on active transport. Uh, what does that two mean after active transport? What's that two mean? Yeah, there's two types of active transport. All right, uh, we'll get to that. But what is the difference between active transport mechanisms and passive transport mechanisms? Active requires what? Yes, energy. Active requires energy. The question is, why? Why do we need energy for active transport? Because back in passive, substances were moved down their concentration gradient. Okay? Or we could say with the concentration gradient. But now, what happens if I'm going to go upstream? What happens if I'm going to move my wagon up the hill? I'm going to be going against the concentration <coughs> gradient, all right? And if you're going to go against the concentration gradient, you need what? You need energy, okay? So that is the biggest difference between active transport mechanisms and passive. The use of energy because you are going against a concentration gradient. Now, how, what do you use if water were to fill in your basement? by simple diffusion, water just went through any opening channel and filled up your basement, uh, how would you get all that water out? What would be the easiest way? What would you use? You'd probably have to go rent it or buy it. Yeah. Yeah, you need a pump. Okay. Well, cells use pumps as well. We call them ion pumps because they pump ions like sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride. All right? If you remember, we drew channels as like just two straight lines. And the channel could either be open or closed. And channels were used by passive transport mechanism. We just moved into the cell from an area of high concentration to an area of what? Low concentration. Okay? But if I wanted to move sodium out of the cell, which means I'd be going against its concentration gradient, then I would have to use a pump, and in this case, it would be called a sodium pump, okay? Pumps are used to force ions into a high concentration environment. Outside the cell, there are tons, tons of sodium, and to make sure that we pump sodium out of the cell, we would have to use this, what we call a pump, an ion pump. Any questions on that? Can you go up here and look in there and see if my head's in the way? No. Nope? Not okay. Really. Good. All right. Well, if energy is the one thing that is needed, then we need to spend some time and talk about ATP because ATP is the energy molecule that will provide energy for our pumps. Channels do not need energy because they simply open and allow ions to flow through them based on their concentration gradient. Does anyone remember what the letters ATP stand for? Anyone remember what those letters stand for? Did you have it written down? Alright. First a stands for adenosine, T stands for tri, and how much does tri signify? Three. And then P stands for phosphate, a very, very complex molecule. In fact, adenosine is made up of two other molecules. So what I attach to adenosine, according to this, if you look at this, what am I going to attach to adenosine? I'm going to attach how many phosphates? Three. So I could write it somewhat like this, couldn't I? Just an A with three P's, each one representing a phosphate. And there are three of these. Count them. One, two, three. But the very last one, we have a special name for that. What's the special name for our last phosphate? We call it the terminal phosphate. The word terminal means end. 
For instance, if you have a disease and it's terminal, yeah, you're at the end. <laughs> okay, terminal. So the word terminus or terminal means end. Well, all we have to do, if you remember in chemistry, all of these compounds are held together by chemical bonds. There's definitely a chemical bond between the second phosphate and the terminal phosphate right here. If I were to break that bond, what would I release? What did you guys learn about breaking bonds? They release what? Energy, sure. And the bond between these phosphates are no different. However, it is only this terminal phosphate that we break up. We call this, well, what happens if you decapitate somebody? What does that mean to decapitate someone? cut their head. What does it mean to deflower a plant? Take away the flower. What do you think dephosphorylation means? Take away the phosphate. Or orylation is the process. So dephos, phos means phosphate, phorylation means remove. So dephosphorylation simply means the removal of a phosphate. So in order to release the energy out of ATP, we have to dephosphorylate the last phosphate. Now, when I do that, I've just made three things. Now, this is a great air test question because there's nothing that you need to know. You could actually, if you don't know any of the words that I'm talking about, um, just with what you do know, you can see that three things were made when you dephosphorylate an ATP molecule. Uh, start from left to right. What do I get? Do I still have ATP? Nope. What do I have? It's not adenosine triphosphate anymore. It's adenosine what? Yep, it's adenosine diphosphate. So my ATP, when I broke off a of phosphate, I made ADP. Well, look what I have here now. What's that guy doing? Is he connected to the molecule anymore? How do we describe that he's not connected anymore? What would, what would, here are two connected phosphates. What kind of phosphate could we call that? I'll give you a hint. It's like cheesy bread. It's free. Okay? I produced a single phosphate. And, of course, the whole reason for doing this was to get what? energy. Okay? ADP plus phosphate plus energy is what I get after dephosphorylating an ATP molecule. So here's my pump right here. I am pumping sodium against its concentration gradient because there is just tons and tons and tons of sodium out here. And I use a pump. My pump requires energy. Energy in the form of ATP, but yet ATP has to be broken down to release that energy. So ATP breaks down into ADP, a free phosphate, and energy. What happens to those free phosphates? Uh, do you think they might recombine with all the ADPs we've made? Absolutely. Okay. In fact, there is an enzyme called ATPase, and all enzymes end in ASE, for your information. So ATPase enzymes make sure that ATP is available and that when ATP gets broken down into ADP, that ADP rejoins with phosphate and becomes ATP again. So we dephosphorylate and then we rephosphorylate. Dephosphorylate, rephosphorylate, dephosphorylate, rephosphorylate. This pump right here has continual energy, mainly due to the presence of this enzyme, ATPase that ensures that ATP is dephosphorylated and then rephosphorylated 
and we just keep using this ATP molecule over and over and over and over again. Right. Any questions on that? Okay. So, let me summarize. Remember this uh, drawing? This was passive transport. We just followed the concentration gradient. Passive meant no energy. But now we want to take our wagon up the hill. Okay, problem is my wagon doesn't have an engine. So whether somebody pushes it or pulls it, it's going to require energy because we are now going against the concentration gradient. What does that look like in a cell? Well, here's sodium, really concentrated outside. If you open up a channel, by simple diffusion it just moves in to the channel. But also, what comes with sodium into the cell? What are all these W's? Water. Water begins to expand the cell. Pretty soon the cell realizes, wait, i got to get rid of that water, and the best way to get rid of the water is to get rid of the sodium. But sodium is highly concentrated, so we've closed this. If we open this up, sodium will just keep coming in. So we have to close that channel, and then I have to use a what to get the sodium out? I have to use an ion pump that gets its energy from, say it, ATP, very good. And I pump sodium against its concentration gradient. All right. That is pretty much today's lesson. Any questions? The only thing now is that there are two different types of active transport. One is called primary, one's called active, and we need to know the difference. And then we need to talk about exo and endocytosis. That'll be tomorrow's lesson.